On this super review, let's take a look at the Fitbit Charge 3. All right, before we get into this, full disclosure, I'm a Pebble person. In fact, I've been wearing a Pebble ever since the original Pebble. I was a backer for the original Kickstarter, the second Kickstarter, and even the third Kickstarter. So I've been with Pebble for a while. That said, the company shut down about two years ago, and ever since then, I've been clinging to my Pebble 2. It's getting a little long in the tooth, things are falling off of it, and I haven't really had a good, solid smartwatch that I wanna to go to. All of the smartwatches, or most of the smartwatches that I've seen, either they're like, they don't do the things that I want them to do, or they do way too many things, and the battery life on them just stinks. The Fitbit Charge 3, it's got a chance to be what I need. It's got a chance. It's got seven days of battery life and it doesn't have a color screen, but I don't care. I don't need a color screen. I just need something that does a few things and we'll get into it. Can I be happy with a Fitbit Charge 3? We're gonna find out. So I'm gonna go ahead and unbox it. We're gonna see what you get inside the box, but then I'm gonna spend a few days wearing it, living with it and comparing it to my Pebble 2, but also a couple of Fitbits that we have in the house because my wife's a Fitbit person. Um, and I'll let you know, is the Fitbit Charge 3 a good Pebble replacement or maybe even just a good replacement for anyone who's got an older Fitbit? Let's check it out. All right, so we got the Fitbit Charge 3 in a box. To be honest, I don't know a ton about this, so this little box tour is actually gonna be informative for me. Let's go ahead and go around the box figure out what we can about the Fitbit Charge 3 before I unbox it. Just looking here down the side, you can tell already that the Fitbit is definitely geared more toward fitness than, you know, something like the Pebble or even, you know, frankly, something like the Apple Watch. You know, the Apple Watch has some fitness stuff in it, but really, I mean, Fitbit's in the name, right? So the Charge 3 appears to be swim proof. I don't know what's, I mean, I guess, I guess it's waterproof. Uh, it's got 24 seven heart rate. So it's got a heart rate monitor built into it and it's just constantly running is what I get from that. Multi exercise modes, I don't know what that means. Apps and notifications. This is where I'm really interested to see how far down the smartwatch rabbit hole Fitbit has gone and still managed to keep this right here, which is battery of up to seven days. Not much on this side, but if we go to the back, there's a whole ton of information. Whew. It's a lot of reading. All right, we're not learning anything. I think we're gonna have to go ahead and crack this open, um, see what you get inside the box, but really to figure out is a Fitbit Charge 3 all the pebble I need. Um, I'm gonna have to live with it for a few days. So let's go ahead and open up and see what we get inside. All right, so we got the Fitbit Charge 3 out of the box and there's not a ton in the box, but that's okay because you don't need a ton. You just need the watch. Okay, you do get some safety instructions and limited warranty information. That's always good. Uh, let's see over here, you get a large, I believe this is probably the large wrist strap, right? It's got one pre-installed and then it's just got a different size so that if this happens to not be the right size for you, you can swap it out and make it larger. Yeah, so it does have the small one pre-installed and you can see that the large one is a good, I don't know, good like inch, inch and a quarter longer than the original. You do get a proprietary charger for the Fitbit. Um, this is very similar to the charger that came with the Fitbit Ulta, which my wife has. Um, it just, it's like a little pincher style. You drop this thing inside of it and it starts charging it. And it connects via USB. It does not come with a USB brick though. So you're gonna have to plug this into either an existing USB brick or into your computer or even a wall outlet these days. A lot of wall outlets will have that. And then of course you've got the Fitbit Charge 3 itself which again comes with the small band pre-installed. I gotta admit, this is a very handsome looking device. It's making my Pebble look a little dated. So like other Fitbits, 
like this, it does have removable bands. You can swap these out with different ones that you can buy. But also like other Fitbits, it does not use a standard connector. This is a completely unique connector. Uh, in fact, the Fitbit Ulta has a completely different connector itself. So it's not compatible with any bands that are other Fitbit bands. You're gonna have to get bands specifically for the Fitbit Charge 3. That said, the installation is super simple just snaps right in. Uh, on the back of the device here is where you can see the heart rate monitor. Now this is also where you've got the charging port. And yeah, I guess, you know, pretty standard for a watch, I suppose. Interestingly, there are no external buttons on this. I thought I saw this little groove in the pictures and I thought that was a button that poked out, but in fact, that is a groove that pokes inward. So there are no buttons at all on this thing. I don't know how I feel about that. Actually, I know how I feel about that. I'm a little bit bummed, but um, that's okay. No buttons, no problem. All right, so the Fitbit is setting up. I had to connect it to my computer. It turned itself on automatically and now it's doing a bunch of different things. I'm gonna go ahead and just spend some time with the Fitbit and I'll compare it to my wife's Fitbits, get a little bit of feedback from her since she knows how to use these things better than I do. Um, and then I'll come back and I'll let you know, what do I think of the Fitbit Charge 3? All right, so I've been wearing the Fitbit Charge 3 for just about a week now, and I've been kind of evaluating it in what I see are the three main categories that a device like this is, is trying to do, all right? And those three categories are, one, how good of a fitness tracker is it? Two, how good of a watch is it? And then three, how good of a smart device is it? There are a bunch of different devices that are similar to this, you know, whether it's another Fitbit, an Android Wear watch, an Apple watch, or even my Pebble. And they're all kind of different balances of those three things. And so I wanted, I wanted to break this down in those three categories and just kind of give you an idea of where the Fitbit Charge 3 does well and where maybe it doesn't do so well. All right, so let's start with the first category, which is fitness tracking. If I were to rate the Fitbit Charge 3 just as a fitness tracker, I'd probably have to give it like five stars out of five. I think that, I mean, as far as what fitness trackers do, this is doing everything about as well as you can expect. And some of the things that, some of the attributes of it, I think make it a little bit better of a fitness tracker than some other devices like this. Namely, I'm talking about battery life. And the reason I think battery life is so important for fitness tracking is that all the things that this thing is recording, right? It, whether it steps your heart rate or your sleep, it's important that you always have that data available, right? The, the more data you have, the better you can make decisions and, and change your behavior based on that data. And if this thing is always out of battery, if you're wearing it and halfway throughout the day it dies, or you're just, you're leaving it on the charger some days because you have to charge it every day. If that's the thing that, if that's a problem, like the fitness tracker is just not gonna be that useful. And I think that having seven days worth of battery life is actually a really big deal when it comes to fitness tracking. Really the big thing that you get with having really good battery life is that you're gonna get that sleep tracking because you don't have to leave your watch on a charger overnight. Frankly, that's like a big reason why I don't have an Apple Watch is I don't, I really like sleep tracking. I think it's pretty interesting. Uh, it tells me how well I slept and it's generally pretty accurate. Um, this is, did a pretty good job of it as well. And if the battery life is not great, if I'm having to leave this thing on a charger overnight, it's not gonna be able to tell me how well I slept. The heart rate functions on this seem pretty good. Like they're always available. As soon as you light up the screen, it's gonna show you what your heart rate is. If I can get it to light up the screen right here, it's showing you what your heart rate is at a glance all the time. It's always measuring it and that's pretty cool. It seemed like also, I, I mean, I can't tell how accurate it is as a heart rate monitor and how specifically accurate it is may not even really matter. What really matters is like directionally. Is it telling you that you have your heart rate elevated or is it telling you that you're at a resting heart rate? And it seems pretty accurate. It seems pretty sensible, right? It's never given me any ratings that don't make any sense to me. And one of the things I think Fitbit does really well, especially better than like my Pebble, when it comes to fitness tracking is like the social network stuff, right? You can link up with your friends. You can see how well they're doing in, in terms of achieving their fitness goals. You can send them encouragement and stuff like that. It's not stuff that I personally use, like the fitness tracking for me of those three categories is probably the least important. But if that's important to you, I think that Fitbit does that pretty uniquely well. And it's here with the Charge 3, you get that. When it comes to the fitness tracking, my only real complaint with the Charge 3 
is that it seems to be overcounting my steps. And now, like, look, I'm not looking for it to be 100% accurate steps. What really matters is like, is it directionally, is it telling me that I'm doing well when I'm doing well? And is it telling me that I need to get off my ass when I need to? And generally, I think that's true of this, but I did notice that the Charge 3 was counting my steps about like 30 to maybe even 50% higher than my Pebble. And my Pebble is generally pretty well calibrated with my wife's Fitbits. She, she's had Fitbits for a while. Um, and so I was curious, is the Charge 3 over counting my steps really, or is it just a Fitbit thing? So I actually had her wear the watch alongside her Fitbit Versa, and she found the same thing, that it seemed like the Charge 3 was over counting steps. It just meant that it, it seemed like I was doing much better at my goals than frankly I actually was. I did do an experiment where I wore both the Charge 3 and my Pebble on the same wrist on a, on a walk. And the walk was, let's see, it was about a 5,000 step walk. And I was surprised they actually both counted steps almost exactly the same, um, which isn't my experience when I was wearing it throughout my daily life. So I'm guessing that this thing is picking up some steps when I'm not doing exercise. Maybe when I'm you know, commuting to and from work, it might be picking up some steps. I'm not sure exactly, but I know, I do know for certain that, you know, there were like three or four days, three or four days that I was testing this thing that each day it indicated I had taken more steps than I really thought I had by again, like 30 to 50% more. I'm not gonna hold that too much against the Fitbit Charge 3 um, for two reasons. One, you know, again, like the exact step count, the accuracy of it isn't super important. What's really important is that it's directionally telling you if you're doing well or if you're not doing well, you know, compared to other days. Uh, and then the other thing is that I kind of expect that they're gonna fix that with software or even potentially it could just be my unit. Like, it seems like a defect. It seems like something that's gonna get fixed. I'm not too worried about that. Category number two, as a watch, if I were to rate this thing just as a watch, well, there's some good things and some bad things. And overall, I'd probably give it like three out of five stars. So the things that I think the Charge 3 does really well when it comes to just being a watch is one, I think it looks really good. Like, I think this looks really super good. I think this is the best looking Fitbit I've ever seen. Um, the screen is not super large, but it's large enough that the numbers, like the, the, the time reading on the watch is plenty large to see at a glance. And I think that's great. The one downside to the display, well, there's a couple of downsides, but one of them is that it just, I feel like it doesn't get bright enough outdoors um, when you're outdoors, the brightness of the screen is going to have to compete with the brightness of the sun. And the sun's pretty bright. I don't know if you've seen it lately. And in my opinion, the brightness on the Charge 3 screen, it struggles a little against it. And part of it is a little bit exacerbated by the design of the watch faces. At least the one that I've got on it right now, it's got a brighter color for the hour and then a dimmer color for the minutes, right? So if it's 330 the three is pretty bright and fairly easy to see, but the 30 is not quite so easy to see in daylight. It's maybe a, a minor issue, but it is there. And then really the other thing, the, the bigger problem I have with this thing as a watch is just that it's not always on. And if you've used other Fitbits, you're probably used to that. If you've used the Apple Watch, you're probably used to that. But I've been using the Pebble recent for, well, heck, I've been using the Pebble for a few years now and I'm used to the screen being always on. Now the screen on the Charge 3 will come on automatically if you like turn your wrist to check the time or if you double tap the screen. Unfortunately, I found that it's just not super reliable. Like sometimes I'll have to flip my wrist up a couple of different times to get this thing to activate or I'll have to reach down and tap it with my finger, my opposite hand. Um, that might seem like a small problem, and if the watch function of this is not a big deal for you, I can totally understand how that might not matter so much. But I just think as a that really plays into how well the Charge 3 does as a watch, and if being a good watch is important to you, I think those things let it down. And then the last aspect of the Charge 3 that I think lets it down as a watch is that there's no date. It does not show you the date at all. And... I found that really surprising the first time I went to check the date and I couldn't find the date on the thing. I was like, wait a minute, this thing doesn't tell me the date. Now you can change watch faces on the Charge 3. So I opened up the app and I looked through all the watch faces that are currently available. 
and none of them have the date on it. Yeah, it's a little surprising. That said, again, like I think that's a thing that they will address and that they'll add more watch faces to the app over time. It's just currently, you can't tell the date with the Charge 3. And now we get to the third category, which is smart things and how well the Charge 3 does its smart things. Typically, Fitbit has not been at like the leading edge of smart things, right? If you want a really smart watch, you gotta get an Apple Watch or an Android Wear. Now those don't have great battery life, and so I think that makes them worse fitness trackers. And so Fitbit's always kind of been somewhere in between. And the Charge 3, I think, is like, it's a pretty decently smart device, but it's got a few issues with it. If I were to rate it just on its smart capabilities, I'd give it like three stars out of five. Now there's no buttons on the Charge 3, but there is this sort of fake button over here on the left. And what I mean by a fake button is that it's just like a pressure sensitive side that as you squeeze the device, it activates a function and it vibrates the device and it's pretty convincing, like it works pretty well. I think that's not bad. I think the general interface for the device is pretty straightforward and it makes sense, it's logical. Um, it did have a few weird glitches with it, like it almost feels kind of like beta software. Uh, but again, like that's a thing that I think will get better over time uh, as they distribute updates for the Charge 3, and I know that they can do updates because I had to install an update right out of the box. One of the smart functions that I like the most about my Pebble is, you know, getting just alerts on my watch rather than having to pull out my phone. And it works with the Charge 3, right? As I'm getting text messages, this thing vibrates and lets me know that I was getting, I'm getting alerts. And then I can read the alerts on here. And, you know, the screen is not massive, but I think it's, you know, it's large enough and the text is large enough that I can read text messages on my device. That said, I did have some problems with the text messages or just the notifications in general because and it's kind of the same problem that I had with it as a watch, right? The single vibrate, it lets me know that there's something for me to read. I turn my wrist to check it and it didn't activate the screen. The screen stays off. And I'm like, I'm looking at this. It, it's just kind of frustrating, right? It vibrated. It told me there was something there. I raised, my, I raised my wrist to check and it didn't show it to me. Another complaint that I would have with the smart capabilities of the device is that there are, yes, there are a couple of interesting apps on here. Like the, the ones that I wanna use the most are a timer, which I use for cooking a lot or exercise, as well as a weather app. And they're both on here, which is cool. Um, but they're a little, it takes a few swipes to get to them in, in the interface and there's no way to currently to change the order of apps. All right, so in conclusion, the Fitbit Charge 3, it's a mixed device and how much you like it is gonna depend, I think, on how you rank those three categories. If the fitness tracking of this is the number one category for you, I think this is a four star out of five device. I think that the fitness stuff is great the the watch it's passable and then the smart stuff it's a nice addition but it's not the best if either of the other two categories are more important to you if having a great watch or having a really smart device are important to you i'd say this is probably like three out of five um, for me personally i'm gonna go ahead and give it the three out of five because for me the fitness stuff is it's it's very interesting to have i love that my pebble does fitness tracking, but for me, it's not the number one motivation for wearing a device like this. If you're interested in checking out the Fitbit Charge 3 on Amazon, of course, I've got links in the description down below. While you're down there, you can hit the like button for the video. If you like the video, you can subscribe to the channel, and then I'll see you in the next Super Review.